Uh, again, we have the Kim one here that's uh, not functioning. Uh, some of the LEDs are missing. Uh, some have gouges in them. These are the two uh, 6530 RAM ROM IO timer chips. Um, I'm actually missing U2 and I do have a U3 over here but I'm not sure it works. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. But we'll have to investigate that more later. Uh, what's going on is U2 is required very much uh, to run the LEDs and the keypad. Along here is 1K of static RAM. These are six, uh, 2102 static RAM parts. Uh, I've done some initial tests of those and I believe there's a fault there. That's a problem because the uh, uh, monitor ROM program really requires memory at, at uh, pages 0 and 1 to be functioning properly to, to work. Over here on the breadboard I have a, a EEPROM socket with a ZIF socket so I can easily uh, take these things in and out and let's see I've got this is a 6532 um, RAM IO timer chip there's no ROM and I've got its uh, IO lines coming back over here and sticking into the appropriate spots where this uh, 6530 goes so it can still drive the um, the displays and the, the keypad. Then um, I also have over here some RAM, but right now it's chip select is uh, set to high, so it's actually not functioning. And what I'm going to show is that uh, this is running the Kim ROM monitor software. And it's using the, the flaky Kim 1 RAM at the moment. So I'm going to Turn this on, come over here and hit the reset, and we've got a zero. Um, the nature of the Kim 1 display is that only one display shows at a time and they uh, try and uh, show all six at the same time by turning one on and then this one, this one, this one, this one. but apparently this has crashed, like if I uh, try and set the address and do something, nothing's happening. Um, so this is crashed, and I'm pretty sure it's the the RAM up here that's the problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this RAM out of the equation and put in this RAM. So I'll turn things off. Okay, so then this is a chip select line in here, and I'm just going to move it down a little bit. So now the onboard. The Kim 1 onboard RAM is now not at zero. And I'm going to take my RAM and put it there. Okay, so now my RAM is at location zero. And we'll see how this works. Turn things on. Reset. Ah, I've got more of the LEDs going. And this is now behaving much more like a proper Kim 1 ROM monitor. Right, and I can uh, see if I put in an address with a lot of F's, let's put in uh, address 9FFF. If I hit the plus, it should go to A. Yeah, look at that. Okay, great. So, so this is a lot of things working here. Uh, most of the uh, computer is actually over here now. I suppose if I move the CPU over up here, then I wouldn't have to deal with this crusty old Kim 1 at all. But uh, the point is to restore the Kim 1. So that's what I'll be doing. Uh, I think next I'll get some of these uh, LEDs um, fixed up and replaced and then see where I want to go from there. Here you can see the two seven segment LED displays that I put in place on the two rightmost digits there. There are actually 14 pin sockets underneath those. I decided to go with sockets because um, when I ordered the, the displays I wasn't sure I was getting the right part. 
In fact, I did get the wrong part, and I've just been out to get some even more replacements, and these ones seem to be working. Uh, they're quite a bit brighter. Um, let's see them in action. Great. I will now proceed to attempt to replace all of the LED displays with these new ones. And here we are with all of the seven segment LED displays replaced. This is the Kim monitor reassembled to run at F800. Nice bright displays. Getting the old ones desoldered was kind of messy. Of the three that were there, one survived, the other two are destroyed. But it's done and they appear to work. So here in the end, it looks like I've got something that's very much like a Kim one, uh, but it has all this extra circuitry. But it's really quite workable using the uh, Kim one monitor. I can do all sorts of uh, things you can do with a regular Kim one, such as um, look at memory. Here's a program that I uh, put in recently that uh, counts on the display. Let's run it. And there it is, counting. It actually will roll over into the top nibble and then it'll roll over to all zeros again, but that would take a very long time. And so here's my Kim 1. Um, there's a bad bit in memory. It turns out it is this chip here did a memory test. Uh, both of the RAM ROM IO timers are not there. Uh, this one was supplied but it was broken. And this one was missing. CPU seems to be working fine. Keyboard seems to be working okay. I never tested any of this analog circuitry. And here's all the rat's nest that it took to get it to go. So that's it.